I thought it would be interesting for you to see this morning a very early 18th century bar walnut needle disc that's just come in. Now this dates from about 1720. How do we know it dates from about 1720? Well, when Chichinsky wrote his seminal works on early English furniture, he categorised it in four different ways. The age of oak, the age of walnut, the age of mahogany, and the age of satinwood. And this piece definitely fits into the second of those categories, the age of walnut. As I say, it's George I period, and there are any number of ways in which we can see this when we look at it. There's the general overall shape that is very typical of a walnut needle desk from that period. And then we'll have a look at some of the details which help to define the period in which it was made. And if we look at the top, it's this wonderful tight figured burr walnut. The burr on a tree is a growth on the outside of the tree. And when the tree is cut, the growth is taken off and inside the growth, you have a very contorted grain. And that's what gives burr walnut this very tight figuring that you see here and on the top as well. The top is quartered, as you can see. Quartering was the case of taking a piece of timber, cutting it through the middle, opening it out like that, and then completing it like that, so that you have four pieces, all of which have the same pattern and give you this wonderful effect. We also have feather banding, as we call it, or chevron banding, as it's sometimes known, which goes around the top and is also around all the drawers and the door there on the central cupboard. This has what we call a caddy top. A caddy top is where the top of a piece of furniture does not overlap the sides, but it has this moulded edge going all the way around it. You can see it going all the way around there, but it also runs all the way around the drawers. And that's important because prior to about 1700, the moulding wouldn't have been on the drawers, it would have been on the carcass itself with the drawers having a straight edge. So there we have the moulding there and around the drawers. And again, at the bottom, you can see it there. This all helps us to try and date it. It has all the original hardware on there. And if I take out any of the drawers, you should be able to see the thin drawer linings in oak and also the dovetailing front and back but also the drawer bottom runs from front to back. This is important because later they learnt to make these drawers, particularly the wider drawers, with the grain running from side to side. And you'll be able to pick up lots more tips like this by reading our e-newsletter that comes out regularly and you can subscribe to this on our website. This piece has the addition of the little sliding tray there, which I think really is rather nice, with the shaped knee hole arch to it. And the central cupboard there. And I do like the way they've got the little cutout on the central shelf so that the lock can actually fit snugly in there. And here we have on this early Georgian knee hole desk, these lovely shaped bracket feet with this shaping there and that was the replacement for the bun foot that we see on earlier pieces from the 17th century as you have on this cabinet there. So we have the transition from bun feet to bracket feet and in this case it's nice to see the shaping here echoed again on the shaping here on the knee hole slider. So there we have it. 17th century foot early 18th century foot. All the brassware on this is original and it's a very lovely piece dating from about 1720. I'm thrilled to have this in stock and can always talk about pieces of this calibre and this quality.